goat l humor from this uh l humor from that little chatter but w humor from the goat dave chappelle dave chappelle will never stop i seen him live i seen him live for his film for his new film for his new special uh coming to netflix and it was absolutely amazing absolutely amazing dude still got it man and uh patrick cc got a video on the goat so you know we got to check out the goat man got to check out the goat man i don't care what nobody's saying he's the fucking goat so is patrick cc how you doing man patrick how you been man been good man good to hear man good comedians will make you laugh yeah the best comedians will make you laugh at things you are not supposed to laugh at. Iconic comedians will transcend the punchlines, mm -hmm. challenge societal norms, mm -hmm. transgress established boundaries, and mm -hmm. continue to share their thoughts despite an uproar of negative criticism. Yes. Dave Chappelle is an iconic comedian, but he did not get there easily. There have been numerous attempts to silence Dave, whether it was a play Ark Survival evolved games with dinosaurs, eyes, eyes, or any Pokemon fan games. Uh, Heart. I don't really play Pokemon like that. And with games like that, people just get like, yo, you'd be surprised how irritated or like how nitpicky people can be. Like, why is he using this Pokemon against this Pokemon when it clearly has a stronger Pokemon to go against? It's like just too much. Like, it'll take the joy out of it. Plus, I never played Pokemon like that to begin with. Heckler, an angry journalist, or a multi billion dollar organization. But Dave was never willing to compromise his integrity. Not for one man, not for one dollar. His big break in Hollywood was when Universal Pictures bought a movie Dave and Neil Brennan wrote called Half Baked. Anybody seen that? Before y'all time. It's a silly stoner comedy reminiscent of Jay and Silent Bob that wasn't a huge hit. But the movie did gross $17 million against a $7 million budget and has become a cult classic since. 24 year old Dave wasn't fully happy with the way the film came out, but he was extremely proud to have his movie on the big screen at such a young age. From there, he started pitching a television show to various networks. Works. Is he the Go comedian? Of course. Hell yeah. Fox was interested, but they worried the show casted too many black people. More oh. specifically, they thought the female. What? Lol, I'm going to be trolling all this nigga. Just recommend you play Pokemon. Gay. <laughs> Uh, according to Chappelle and Talon, Fox executives believe that the Touchstone TV sitcom was too black. Female star of the show wasn't funny, and they wanted Dave to recast her to a white actress. Dave simply denied because this particular sitcom was based on his life, and he grew up in an all-black household. A few days after that meeting, Variety posted an article that claimed he was playing the race card. Dave said, "This network built itself on black viewers, and what they're saying is white people are narcissistic. They don't want to watch black people." They want to watch themselves. It tells every black artist, no matter what you do, you need whites to succeed. Mm. Fox claims they were making a light suggestion to add a different perspective, a point of view that allows a larger audience to appreciate Shut it. Up. Most young people in the industry would just accept the request of a major corporation. But Dave was unashamed of his decision and was willing to tell the world exactly how he felt. I felt like I was beaten up and completely degraded, he said. It's disgusting, and it made me want to vomit. Bro, that's the thing with these like companies. They think because they are offering you like a bag or something that they can just control you or like shit that you like how you move, how you talk and what you do. That's why, bro. You know, <laughs> I still haven't told y'all yet because I'm waiting for, you know, the half bag that I still deserve to clear. Uh, But bro, basically people will be trying to control you, what you say, what you tweet, what you put on your stories and shit like that. And sorry, but that's not that's not gonna happen, bro. That's not gonna happen. What chatters chats, how chat acts. Yeah, sorry. That's not that's what how the chat is. You came to me and you knew how my chat was before then. Uh I'm not gonna go ahead and put up this whole fucking wall just because it makes you feel uncomfortable. Shut the fuck up. They're just jokes. Laugh. Holy shit, fuck you. It pretty much took Dave one bad experience. That's why I don't even like your shit in the first place. Dumbass bitch. I <laughs> to know this whole Hollywood thing is overrated to make matters worse. It's not State Farm. It's, I know y'all thinking, I know that's the one y'all think of, but like, it's literally not State Farm. State Farm has literally been the best. Worse, his father was on his deathbed. Which is crazy because every State Farm stream that goes up, y'all be up in there putting sleep emojis, talking about Kren, dies of Kren, dies of Kren, but like, they know what's up. They know how it is. And I told them that's not, that's just how they are, but like, they're engaged. They're like, they're engaged. It's, it's, it is what it is, but. There's other companies who just don't understand that. And I don't care how much money you give me. I'm a dinosaur game. Can you watch a trailer? Uh, yeah, yeah. 
said. While traveling back and forth from LA to Ohio, he realized how much he loved the small town of Yellow Springs. He describes it as something so real in contrast to Hollywood's powerful illusion. Dave purchased a farm out in the town with 3,000 people because he can focus on his family and friends. He can have real genuine interactions with people who aren't trying to gain something from him. Sadly, his father passed away at the young age of 59. William David Chappelle III was a veteran, college professor, and an organizer in the civil rights movement in Ohio. Although young Dave lost the man he would go to for all of his advice, he knew that his father would want him to stand up and speak out for what he thought was right. Dave was not going to let anyone walk all over him, because Comedy Central was about to try their best at controlling him. Yeah. Dave was convinced that after his father had passed, he was done with the show business, and he was just going to do stand-up. His first hour-long comedy special, Killing Them Softly, released on HBO, Amazing. and many consider this to be one of the best stand-up specials yep. of all time. Yep. People knew Dave was a generational talent. Ain't miss a beat with this fucking special. He knew it. He could not give up on this dream. He started writing a variety show with various skits and sketches that were personal and relatable to the common man. He knew he had something big, and after a few years in 2003, he decided to pitch a new show titled The Chappelle Show which got picked up by Comedy Central for two seasons. The Chappelle Show is regarded by many as the greatest sketch comedy show in history. Come on now. Dave would open the show performing stand-up to a live Come audience on and then shift the joke into a pre-recorded sketch. All of his bits were rooted in a great deal of irony. One of my favorite Dave Chappelle skit is when he was a blind black KKK member. Oh, yeah, I know exactly which one. Basically conveying the I know exact exactly opposite which one you're talking what you about. expect. Like this employee training video that teaches you exactly how to get fired. Getting to work. First of all, never show up on time. He created characters that would earn die-hard fan bases, like Tyrone Biggums, who was, well, pretty much just a it's cracker, doo -doo, baby. or Clayton Bigsby, the world's only black white supremacist. Due to his blindness, he didn't I hope everyone has his great day today. Six. Six know that he was actually black. Sometimes his characters were just over-exaggerated versions of real people, what? like Lil Jon or Rick James. I'm Rick James, bitch. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. <laughs> oh my god, I want to remember when Rick James actually said that on stage during a uh, was it was it a, an acceptance speech or an award acceptance speech? Goated, goated moment in time. Edgy isn't nah, bruh. Even a good enough word to describe Dave's humor. He was way over the edge with some of these bits. The most shocking of them all was perhaps the Hard R family, <laughs> a rich suburban white family whose this last name so is the racial slur. Morning, niggas. Why it's pushing our colored milk man. And it's my favorite family to deliver milk to. The niggas. <laughs> The very first episode of Chappelle's show tackled an extremely oh risky God. subject, basically becoming a mission statement for the program. If you don't like this, you won't like anything else. Something like the Chappelle show will never air on TV ever again. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh yeah, and 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 for the, and, and for the girl backstage, and for that girl backstage, <laughs> make, make it publicly clear. Never mind who you thought I was, I'm Rick James, bitch. <laughs> Never mind who you thought I was, I'm Rick James, bitch. Bro, that was like the hardest, like, bitch deliver I've ever heard. <laughs> Never mind who you thought I was, I'm Rick James, bitch. <laughs> Amazing. But at the time, people loved it. Now even in 2004, the mainstream media was against shocking, vulgar, and risky entertainment, but they had a little tolerance. The solution back then was put it on after hours, like after 9pm when the kids are asleep. The Chappelle Show averaged 3.1 million viewers per episode in 2004, just shy of Saturday Night Live's 3.7 million. However, Dave's impact on culture at that time far exceeded SNL. He was a superstar comedian at a time where comedy was missing superstars. Dave's show saved Comedy Central from failing and made them a ton of money. Chappelle Show Season 2 Uncensored has broken both the first day and seven day sales records for TV on DVD, with close to 500,000 units sold on its May 24th release date and more than 1.2 million units sold Damn. in its first week out in the market. 
Chappelle's show season one uncensored released last year is the best-selling TV on DVD title with close to 3 million copies sold. Golly. Because of the first two seasons undeniable success, Comedy Central offered Dave a whopping $50 million for a new season, but instead, he walked away. Like many people who are new to the entertainment industry, Dave signed a contract that he didn't fully understand. Of course he hired a- Yo, really think about that. As much, as, as big as a legend as Dave Chappelle is and what he was doing, $50 million to come back. Streamers are literally getting that to go to a stream, like just to stream some shit. That shit is crazy, bro. That shit crazy how things are like, just where where uh, entertainment is going, bro. A lawyer, but ultimately he knew this show was great for his career and he would make good money. What could possibly go wrong? Dave says he never got paid for the Chappelle show because the contract said Comedy Central didn't have to pay him. That's this contract up. also said that they have the exclusive right to use the name and likeness of the artist in perpetuity throughout the universe in any and all media known or invented in the future. On top of them literally owning him, Dave just straight up didn't like the fame and attention. That's he just up. liked comedy but even that was getting ruined. One night while he was performing in Sacramento, California, he walked off the stage after berating his audience for constantly shouting, I'm Rick James, bit. Oh my gosh, bro. Oh my God. God damn! Today is my birthday, been watching you for years now. If it wasn't for you and Ray. It's literally chat. In all honesty, I don't think I would still be here. Bro. I'm not perfect, but I'm trying. Thank you for everything. Can you say happy birthday, JK? It'll mean a lot. Happy birthday, JK. Love you, man. Everything you did and why you're here, you did that yourself, bro. You know, we were just, we were just kind of in the background. Chat, it's just like, oh my God, that's, <laughs> it's like, imagine anything, anything. That's like when I'm playing, like if I was streaming a game, it, it that does happen. When I'm playing a game, people are like, yo. Uh, are you going to react to the album? This interview on Oprah where he was offered 100 million to come back, but he turned it down and Oprah looked crazy as shit. Why would Oprah look crazy as shit, man? Um, it's just, it's just like cringe shit. That's like when niggas see Duke Dennis in person are like, Riz! Like, what? Like, what the fuck is the context, bro? Like, I'm, I'm doing a stand-up special. Why are you yelling I'm Rick James? What, what do you expect me to respond to, with, like, while I'm doing my bit? Like, that's so weird. Which had become a catchphrase from the popular Rick James sketch on his show. Stand-up is the most important thing I do. And because I'm on TV, you make it hard for me to do it, he said. The show is ruining my life, Chappelle told the crowd. Besides requiring him to work 20 hours a day, it has made him a star, which has resulted in the inability of fans to treat him as an individual. Oh my God, so bro. when Comedy Central offered him $50 million, it came with stipulations. He had to get approvals on certain jokes. He didn't have full creative control, and they worked Appro him. Approvals? Appro excuse me, approvals on jokes? Nigga, what? like a dog it wasn't worth the money so one day he just walked off set and moved to south africa yeah now nah, you couldn't pay me enough you couldn't pay me enough money to like <laughs> to get my jokes approved for streams <laughs> no what the fuck desperate to get as far away from hollywood as possible in response comedy central ran a smear campaign on him yep. saying that he was crazy and on drugs literally tried to can't this is literally them trying to cancel him I'm so glad like nobody fell for that shit though. Even though like there were some stupid people who who were who would, but in May 2005, Comedy Central began promoting the anticipated debut of Chappelle's show season 3. One day later, the channel announced that the production on the show had been unexpectedly suspended. Then one week later, every news outlet reported that Chappelle had checked into a mental health facility in South Africa, perpetuating the narrative that he was mentally unstable. Some reports said he was even smoking crack. I was freaked out, man, with the fame thing and, and being called uh, crazy and drug addict and all these things uh, scared me. You know, just being treated that way. Like, I'm not a person anymore. So what y'all got to, what people got to realize is that some people want to just do things that they love doing without, like, being so much, like, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It's just like, bro, just because someone is received or offered a whole bunch of money doesn't mean that they're willing to, like, sacrifice a big part of who they actually are. Please watch what Cat Williams said about Dave when all this was happening. Super short clip. 
gold. Cat Williams is go is goaded too, regardless of all that <laughs> that crazy shit that was happening for that that sh uh, short period of time. Yeah. Cat, you are definitely one of the most controversial comedians in the game. Thank you. What is like the crazy? Oh, yeah, this, this was during that time, not nine years ago. Yeah, this was this was during when he was kind of tripping. Is he more controversial than Richard Brown? For nope. this time he is, for okay. this era. Okay, talk to me. Um, which yeah. she would know. is the most outrageous thing you've heard about yourself, true or false? It kind of happened with, uh, with like Chris Tucker too. He kind of stopped doing like movies at his prime and got super religious and people were calling him crazy. What? <laughs> like, bro, what? Dude found God. He didn't want to keep doing the shit that he was doing. Just because, like, you're going to get a lot of money does not mean you're going to, you know, give up who you are or who you want to be. Yeah, whatever that was just like, wow. Honestly? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so technically this story doesn't have anything to do with me. Okay. Because I've never been the funniest person on the planet at any point. So now it doesn't matter if people have a different opinion and it doesn't matter if my fans think differently. They're biased. They should think differently. Mm -hmm. But now Dave Chappelle has always been funnier than me. And Chris Rock has always been funnier than me. I've always been aware of who was funnier than me. I've just also been aware of who wasn't. So now I know the real Bernie Mac stories, and I know that the people that made money off Bernie Mac didn't like him. Mm. They hated his guts. Mm. And that was our king. I feel like this is how Uzi's going to be when he get old. That was our real king for all of those of us who was out there doing it for $20 for 45 minutes on some almost a hoe. See, when I put out pink tape, there were people who were hyping it who really didn't like me from the jump. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's like it's like yo uzi still sassy <laughs> well i know what you're saying i know brother mac i'm from yeah. chicago I'm saying, oh, that, yeah, was we know real, that was yeah. our real comedy king not, you gave him his first job not how it went down not how it ended up because sometimes the victors rewrite history but by the same token god is there for us when i put out pink tape they thought that i was gay mm. figure that mm. Ten years later, I got a wife and three kids. Mm. Oops. Uzi, you're 50. <laughs> Sometimes his best gift to us is getting us out. So right when Bernie had proven his point and right when Bernie showed everybody who he actually was and Bernie, curtain scene. Just like Rick James. Rick James was in obscurity. And then God said, you know what? You can run them bases one more time. And he ran them bases <laughs> one more time. And that's what it was. I'm saying, Heavy D was, I was with him every day before he went. Yvette Wilson was living in my house when, I'm saying, I'm not, I'm, I'm saying. Talk I'm to saying, us, talk to us. It's a different tell Hollywood story. than the Hollywood. And the reason you don't know these stories is there's no one to tell you these stories. Because you can't make me tell them. That's right. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying it's always like Porter said, controversial cat. Yeah, you know what I mean. Should be. Way cat being. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is he better than Jamie? Is he no. better? Is he better than Kevin Hart? No. Uh, is he? Is he? Oh, wait, Cat Williams. I'm not gonna lie. Listen, listen. I like. I like. Uh, <laughs> someone said short clip my ass. Uh, I love Kevin Hart just as much as the next person. But I feel like Cat Williams was funny. Was funnier. They got like their comedy. They're like funny or different things. I feel like, like Kevin Hart was still funny. It's still funny, but like I don't know. It's Cat Williams. Like he just got it. Yeah. And Dave Chappelle. You That's know. cool. Well, I like that that you say that. But well, your we fans take it have another way. We your fans. We think you cool. Prove my points. Well, that's why I said your fans have a difference of opinion. But Dave Chappelle was decapitated in front of us. And Kevin he ain't funny. He he. Kevin ain't that funny. He's funny. He is funny. I think it's just at the point people are at the point where they're kind of just sick of his comedy, uh, sick of his humor because we've seen it in every aspect: commercials, movies, his stand-up specials, uh, just like his Instagram page. We've just seen it everywhere. 
Until we deal so it's just with it's that. just like old until now. we deal with um, <laughs> the fact that a devout Muslim who doesn't eat bacon was accused of being a crackhead. Until we until we hey, this is like he's he's kind of chatting now. You say this shit about me in front of my children, and you know, who really like who the f do these people think they are? And they don't know what happened. You know, I. I Dave's exit from the $50 million deal was one of the most profound statements in pop culture history. He was already mega famous, but ironically, this exit made him even more famous. One 2006 article said, These days, if Dave Chappelle merely catches a cold, it winds up in the media or on the internet. He fired back, saying he was not on drugs and he was not crazy. In fact, he was the most level-headed person out there, denying money for his sanity. As I'm you not should. in a mental facility. As you Everyone should. around me says, You're a genius. You're great. That's your voice but I'm not sure they're right. You hear so many voices jockeying for position in your mind that you want to make sure you hear your own voice. So I figured, let me just cut myself off from everybody. Take a minute and pull a Flintstone. Stop a speeding car by using my bare feet as the brakes. Hollywood just couldn't fathom that someone who became famous would choose to abandon that lifestyle. He did make a short reappearance at the 48th Grammy Awards where he received a standing ovation. Right in front of the entire industry, Dave told them how he didn't want to be there. The only thing harder than leaving show business is coming back. Later that evening, he went to an after party held at the home of the legendary artist Prince. Instead of talking to Mariah Carey, Common, or industry powerhouses, he sat in a chair on the back patio, only conversing with people who wanted to. Mm. He looks like he is hiding from his peers, hiding from the attention, hiding from the part of himself that is a major star. Dave said, this ain't really my thing. After that night, Dave realized it was time to disappear. And he did just that. Yeah. And nobody really heard from him for many years. What, what did you do for those 10 years? It was a humble existence. Shit, he be, he be striking people or some shit? God damn. I had had young children. I was raising my kids. I was living a suburban life. And then every once in a while, I get this feeling like I'm the funniest guy. I got to get out there. And I would like fly to Denver, do a week in Denver or something. And, and that's when he would read. I was doing like these six hour shows. I performed like I was desperate for it. I, lo I loved it. Yeah. He rode across the country on a motorcycle, focused on raising his children, maintained good standing relationships with his friends. He lived an extremely normal life, just mm. like me and most of you watching this video. Mm. Dave would only make selective appearances from 2005 to 2016. He had a few random stand-up performances here and there. One of them even broke a world record. A six hour and seven minute set at the Laugh Factory became the longest comedic performance in history. He performed at the Oddball Comedy Tour in 2013, doing large arenas around the country. You know how crazy in that Hartford, is? In Connecticut, he was booed and heckled during his entire set. Until he left the stage saying this crowd was the worst one he had seen in his whole life. This bomb made Dave realize he was rusty, and he needed to get back to being funny again. So in 2014, he made a grand comeback by headlining 10 nights at New York City's iconic Radio City Music Hall. The buzz surrounding his return grew as he was interviewed on various late night talk shows. Dave rocked the sold out crowds every single night, selling over 60,000 tickets in total. These unforgettable shows marked his official return to the spotlight after after his prolonged absence. Dave achieved a legendary status just from his Comedy Central show and one stand-up special. The comedy community as a whole was honored to have him back. He hosted Saturday Night Live during election weekend when Trump won in 2016. Remember this. Donald Trump, he did it. He's, he's our president. I feel bad saying it. I'm staying in a Trump hotel right now. <laughs> Damn, it's crazy. Now Trump is like literally about to be locked up. Ain't his mugshot about to, about to drop soon? Mug drop dropping soon. Oh my god, I wonder how many rappers are gonna use this as a fucking like um song god, like song profile no. picture. Oh my god, you're so funny. What platform is this so I can follow you? Wait, is this Netflix? How do I sub? Help? Netflix is getting streamers. Like god, Netflix is gonna no. get streamers, bro. Lol, sorry for not time stamping it. The part where Kat explains why Dave actually walked away from $50 million was coming up. Starts at 2.58 and goes until 5 o'clock. Two minutes. You had me sit there and watch that, and then I literally stopped it when he was, when he was about to talk about it. I don't know if he's going to make it. You moving a kick, too? Who? Bro, I just, I literally had, I just went on a, a rant at the start of the stream talking about how I'm so sick of these, so sick of streaming, bro. <laughs> How I can't st stand streaming. You think I'm about to stream? You think I'm about to switch to a platform to stream more? Hell no, nah, man. 
good president, but he makes a swell hotel. I, like, don't get me wrong. I love streaming. I absolutely love streaming. But it is not, it is not, there is nothing worth my, like, my sanity to, to, to do that, to do that to myself oh, at all. I'm tell you that. <laughs> housekeeping comes in in the morning, cleans my room, and I just, hey, good morning, housekeeping. Grab a big handful of pussy and say, you know. <laughs> Boss said it was okay. Citizens feared that the new president was going to destroy this country. Dave was skeptical, but ended his monologue with this message. I'm wishing Donald Trump luck, and I'm gonna give him a chance, and we, the historically disenfranchised, demand that he give us one too. Thank you very much. Netflix announced that they would be hosting Dave for three specials, in which he would be receiving $20 million for each one. Mm. In a way, this can be seen as making up for the trouble he went through with Comedy Central. The Age of Spin was released on Netflix in 2017 and was met with good reviews. Months later, while headlining at Radio City Music Hall, he made multiple jokes about the transgender community. One in specific talks about Trump banning trans people from serving in the U.S. military, in which Dave pokes fun- I'm not here enough to talk for real, but I think you're too easily bothered by chat niggas. It's, it's, it's more than that. Also, what you got to realize in, in my spot, you just see things from stream. Like you see things from stream and take it as boom. It's just that I am dealing with shit on Instagram via messages and my comments and YouTube comments, different YouTube channels that I like that aren't even me that people think are, are me. And then TikTok shit, man, I am dealing with shit from all cylinders before I even hit go live. And so as soon as I do go live, it's even more on, you know, he don't got to get banned. He, I think he's just literally saying, but it's like, as soon as I do hit live, then boom, the, the compoundment of stress and bullshit that I've seen leading up till six o'clock PM Eastern time just explodes. It just, it just explodes. And some, some of the frustration leaks out. If one person uh, says, why aren't you reacting to this? And I'm like, yo, dude. Holy shit. I've seen this shit all fucking morning. I've seen this shit everywhere I fucking turn. I'm going to fucking get to it. So it may seem like it's just that one person that caused me to act like that, but it's literally been built up since the morning that any album or any song is dropped. It's just been building up because I get spammed, you know? And then I get people like this who, you know, some of them are trolls, but some of them actually are like this that uh, come in here and be like, shut the fuck up and press play. Just shut up and entertain me uh so it's just like bro you wouldn't understand unless you were in my position dealing with this shit since uh 2015 since 2015 uh I, it's easy to be like you know ignore this ignore that but like i said you just never understand it's the same way you could say wow if it was just me i would have just you know made the few changes that's 50 million dollars that's life-changing that's easy for you to say you're looking from the outside it, it's it's easy for anybody to judge somebody else's situation when you are not in their situation. It's the same way when people be like, bro, school is so difficult or I hate my job. It's like, bro, just ignore all this bad shit that be happening, bro. Just work. Like some people wish they could have your job. Like, dude, the, the fuck? It can, it, it, it works either way, bro. Like, and says that ISIS would be horrified to see trans women storming at them. Chappelle says he doesn't understand trans people, but doesn't think that disqualifies them from being a human being that deserves a life with dignity and happiness and respect. He ended by arguing that sometimes he thinks the only reason all of us are talking about transgenders is because white men want to do it. If it was just black people and Mexicans like, hey y'all, we feel like girls inside, they'd be like, shut up, no one asked <laughs> you how you felt. No, Patrick, he, he said, shut up, nigga. Nobody asked you how you felt. Dave received a lot of criticism, with many citing that it doesn't matter he is joking because they are rooted in bigotry and overgeneralizations, oh, or they say he shouldn't joke about a topic he is uneducated on. This back and forth just perpetuated more jokes and commentary from Dave. And yo, he, he definitely hit on that shit in his new special. I ain't gonna leak nothing, but oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It became a bulk of his material. You know who hates me the most? The transgender community. Despite the controversy, his and this is yo, he's so childish, he's so petty because he'll say something and then like look around. <laughs> he'll say something and then look around before he says the fucking joke that he knows is about to hit. Who hates me the most? The transgender community. 
despite the controversy, his comeback was receiving all the praise. In 2017, Chappelle received a Grammy Award for Best Comedy Album for his first two specials, As he fucking Spin should. and Deep in the Heart of Texas, and later that year would go on to receive an Emmy Award and another Grammy for Outstanding Variety Special for Equanimity. He also won the Mark Twain Prize for American Humor, but it was in 2019 where the backlash reached new heights. Sticks and Stones released on Netflix in 2019, and Dave didn't hold back on this one. Me Too, Gun Control, Opioid Crisis, Cancel Culture, and of course, the transgender community, he covered every hot button topic in one special. Sticks and Stones marks a shift. This performance felt way more like a piece of social commentary rather than stand-up comedy, at least in the first half. Now I think this goes without saying, but comedy is extremely nuanced. Cherry picking clips and bits can often remove the necessary context that sells a joke. NBC said that today's context-free Twitter culture is preventing Dave from thriving. You're either fighting President Donald Trump or you're a MAGA apologist. You're either believe all women or you're anti me too. And that black and white world is not one in which Dave Chappelle has ever operated. Nobody cares about Twitter. Particularly now. Many or X. People read Most these people wouldn't understand what it's like to have people ask the same BS every day. I'm an artist painter. It's it's not an hour that goes by when someone isn't telling me what I should paint. BC they wanna see it. You got a strong ass mental don't I? Or imagine, bro, anything that you do paint when you post it, somebody is nitpicking a part of the painting. Like, well, me personally, I wouldn't draw it like that. Or like, why do you draw like, or why does it take you so long to draw? I'm just going to stop. I'm going to stop like waiting for your art because this person's art comes out way faster. It's like, duh, like, oh my God, shut the fuck up. Like, what the fuck? Just stop. Just stop waiting for my next fucking art piece to drop, bro. <laughs> headlines and tweets and form opinions without actually digesting the material. However, even those who did fully digest the special still were not impressed. Sticks and Stones registers as a temper tantrum, the product of a man who wants it all money, fame, influence, without much having to answer to anyone. Forbes chimed in with, Dave Chappelle's Sticks and Stones tries too hard to offend. Oh my god, that's how you know, just niggas just, oh my god. Comedians have always made jokes about current societal standards and political climates. Discussing societal issues mixed in with quips and bits make their performances relatable, but not too serious. Dave and many people in defense of comedy argue that nothing is off limits when it comes to jokes, but opposers pick and choose what is allowed to be joked about. At this point, we're re-entering a familiar cycle. Chappelle releases a special on Netflix, he says something incendiary, it's quoted back to him in a headline, and Chappelle reacts to the criticism in another Netflix special. But this isn't necessarily a bad thing. A comedian is not absolved from criticism, and critics don't have to think someone is funny. This cycle is a product of free speech, and any sane human understands both sides are allowed and should speak their mind. One person who knows that the most is Dave Chappelle, who boycotted his own show because he felt like it. In 2020, Viacom, the owner of The Chappelle Show, licensed the show to Netflix and HBO Max without providing Dave with any compensation and without making him aware of the deal. He was aware that it was legal in the court of law, as it was stated in the contract he signed during the show's initial negotiations, but he saw the move as unethical. In a video released by Dave titled Unforgiven, he would ask his fans to boycott this. the show on HBO until he was paid citing the ethical obligations of Viacom to pay him what he was owed. Since he had such a good relationship with Netflix, he was furious they did this to him because of how badly Comedy Central treated him. So you know what I did? I called them and I told them that this makes me feel bad. And do you want to know what they did? They agreed that they would take it off their platform just so I could feel better. That's why I... With Netflix. Dave and his fans praised Netflix for removing the show based on his feelings, but they were shocked when members of the trans community tried to get Dave's special removed because he hurt their feelings. The Closer was his 2021 Netflix special where he again made jokes about trans people, as well as anti-gay jokes and defending TERFs. He stated in the special that gender is a fact. In the special's closing moments, he tells a story about his friend Daphne Dorman, who was a trans woman and standout comedian, that defended Dave from criticism in his previous special, Sticks and Stones. Punching down requires you to consider yourself superior to another group. Dave Chappelle doesn't consider himself better than me in any way. He isn't punching up or punching down. He's punching lines. That's his job, and he's a master of his craft. Dave claimed that Daphne Dorman received so much hate from her own community. Wow, interesting. Hypocritical. It's like, it's you know, it's like fucking... 
Crazy, bro. Unity, but she died by suicide six days after the special. Right wing media went into a frenzy saying the trans community are hypocrites and will destroy their own people. However, there is little evidence that supports Daphne's expiration has anything to do with hate. Back in 2019, that tweet had just 12 replies. Another tweet supporting Chappelle had nine. The Instagram post in which she declared her friendship with Chappelle doesn't have any critical replies. Comments on her Facebook post announcing that she was opening for Chappelle are uniformly positive. So are the ones on Reddit after she posted about it there. She doesn't appear to have said anything on Twitter or Facebook about receiving abuse. Her side note doesn't mention bullying, nor do any of the Holy obituaries shit. written after her death. Because of this, many people thought Dave was using someone's death to his own benefit, and the trans community were tired of Dave. Netflix employees interpreted oh God, the closer as hate though. speech, and 65 employees participated in a walkout in protest of the company. The protest garnered a lot of support online, However, it was generally unsuccessful because Netflix has stood behind Dave, kept his specials up, and continued to work with him in the future. Then things escalated to physical violence against Dave. Make some noise for hip hop history. Isaiah Lee was the name of the. That boy got fucked up too. Suspect who they broke his arm later admitted why he attacked the comedian. I identify as bisexual and I wanted him to know what he said was triggering. I wanted him to know that next. So you were going to murder him. Makes sense. Because someone was done said hurt your feelings. You're going to murder them. Right. Okay. Time he should consider first running his material by people it could affect. Isaiah Lee has also been charged with attempted murder after stabbing his roommate. Fucking, last fucking dumbass. This guy's a fucking lunatic. Also, if we run jokes by everybody who may be like offended, there just would be no jokes. Like comedy would be fucking these trash ass Disney movies. <laughs> it would be just like the fucking new Spy Kids movies that that's coming out fucking ass holy shit last effort to take down then you know what matter of fact that's offensive to me that's offensive to me that they're doing that to fucking spy kids i still can't let that shit go dave a venue in minneapolis canceled a sold out show of his hours before the doors were set to open we believe in diverse voices and the freedom of artistic expression but in honoring that we lost sight of the impact this would have the event was moved to a smaller venue in the same city and sold out two shows back to back it seemed like the more backlash dave got the more it would ultimately help his career. I mean, it's the good PR was nominated at the end of the for day. Emmy for Outstanding Variety Special. To close out the Emmy. year, Dave took the stage on SNL and delivered the show's opening monologue. And yes, he faced even more controversy. Recently, Kanye West had went on an anti-Semitic rant on social media, to which Dave responded with, I denounce anti-Semitism in all its forms. <laughs> and I stand with my friends in the Jewish community. And that... Kanye is how you buy yourself some time. <laughs> you know, the rules of perception. If, if they're black, then it's a gang. If they're Italian, it's a mob. But if they're Jewish, it's a coincidence and you should never speak about it. Despite Dave obviously disagreeing with Kanye, his jokes entertain the possibility that some of what Ye said holds an ounce of truth, which led to even more critics calling Dave anti-Semitic. He ended the monologue with a message. It shouldn't be this scary to talk about anything. It's making my job incredibly difficult. And to be honest with you, I'm getting sick of talking to a crowd like this. I love you to death. And I thank you for your support. And I hope they don't take anything away from me. <laughs> Whoever they are. Some people think that Dave's legacy has been tainted by hardcore transphobia no. or trying too hard to be controversial. No. Even though his comedy has always towed the line as to what is socially acceptable, Dave has benefited greatly from free speech. He has gained hundreds of millions of dollars and diehard fans around the world, so it's only fair if his opposition can also speak up and voice their opinions and disagreements with his performances. All attempts to silence Dave have been proven unsuccessful because no matter what, he will always get right back on that stage and speak his mind. Because the internet isn't real and people are just going to cry about some shit anyway. You're making me an N-word. <laughs> nervous. You're, make, you're making me nervous. Lol my bad bro. That was on me for not time stamping. I'll do better next time. Maybe watch it right after this Patrick CC clip. You're A great summation slash conclusion. Dave is goated. Starts at two. You're, you're good, bro. It's, it's all good. You're making me an N-word. 
You're making me an N-word. Oh, man. Shout out to Dave Chappelle, bro. Regardless of whatever's going on, he always going to have a joke for it, which is how niggas should be. <laughs>